So let's try to interpret the solution physically. So the y-axis is eta. The x-axis is a non-dimensional version of the streamwise velocity. Do we remember what eta means and what the non-dimensionalized streamwise velocity means? Okay, you are looking, some people are blank, some people are looking at your notes. Let's review what we have been doing, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, take, uh, so we started by, we started all of this by writing down what is the, uh, what is the equation that governs the streamline in a, in a thin layer approximation. The equation we started with was the y derivative of phi, which is the x velocity, right, times the uh, derivative of phi to x and y. So this term, if you can think, if you can fast translate phi to velocities, is the x momentum transport term. Minus, this is the uh, y velocity times second derivative of that if you can again can translate very fast this is the y momentum transport term is equal to ux uh, no, not ux uh, ue times due dx and uh, this is the pressure term that has to balance the x momentum transport term in the outside of the boundary layer and uh, plus the dissipation term, so that is the y derivative times a uh, kinematic viscosity times the second order derivative of, of psi. And then we started by asking, is it possible to have a self-similar solution, right? Because that will simplify our analysis leading to understanding a lot faster. So. And a self-similar solution means there, when you shift my x, the streamwise location, from one position to a little bit downstream, the solution looks exactly the same except for a scaling in the... Ex the solution looks exactly the same like this except for I have a scaling in the velocity scale and I also have a scaling in the y scale right so if you scale both x and y properly the solution would look like exactly this way right so what we said is that um, my solution at x plus a uh, dx y plus epsilon times y so y plus epsilon times y is a proportional scaling in the y direction would be proportional to the solution, right, u, x, y. And when we differentiate this, we get a differential relationship on, on the velocity u. So we set this plus theta y, partial u, partial y is equal to alpha times u. So this is derived by just the, uh, the derivative of the definition or the physical interpretation of the self-similarity. Okay, and starting from that, we can just uh, write this u in terms of the streamline function because u is d phi dy. So just uh, by substitution, we get the relationship in uh, in phi. We get the second derivative of phi to x and y. The, the, the has to equal to so plus theta y so this is a uh, wait that's not it uh, so okay so let's let's uh, uh, let's go f let's start from here and uh, uh, specialize to the Blasius solution where alpha is zero so there is no scaling yes where did I get this equation? Okay, so this equation we get it by differentiating both x and y, uh, both uh, the differentiating the left hand side with respect to x. 
okay so so this the left hand side being being proportional to the x y means this is equal to uh, u times a, c, a certain one plus epsilon prime right so when you shift towards the x direction the the u is scaled proportionally uh, by a small amount if delta x is small and the y is scaled by a small amount if delta x is small right that's what we mean by we are scaling the solution in u and in y uh, both proportionally <coughs> the theta here is the derivative of epsilon with respect to dx so epsilon over dx so the uh, the alpha here is epsilon prime over dx it's basically if you change a smaller amount in dx how much would the y scale change and how much would the u scale change right so let me actually write it down so uh, let me actually draw this so so if i have a solution that is Blasius, and I have a solution later on that is also Blasius. Uh, the difference between ue of x and ue of x plus dx is scaled. So if this is dx, it's scaled by one plus epsilon prime, right? So so basically ue of x plus dx is equal to 1 plus epsilon prime times ue of x that means if i take the derivative of ue with respect to x this is going to be equal to epsilon prime over dx which i call this alpha times ue of x so basically alpha is the is the rate of growth of the uh, velocity outside the boundary layer alpha equal to zero means there is no growth uh, the velocity is constant all right so that's that's one thing another thing is how does the y similarity uh, change as as the solution grows so again let's take a look at the velocity profile we get so the Blasius profile is the same for x and x plus dx. But the location of eta equal to 1 has to change. So if eta equal to 1 is here, then eta equal to 1 is going to be a slightly shifted position in y. Eta equal to 2 here, then eta equal to 2 would be here, right? And that change is reflected in this y plus epsilon y. So, so y plus epsilon y at the downstream profile corresponds to the same location as y in the upstream profile. And the rate of growth of that y is characterized by this theta. All right, so, so let's say, <coughs> If eta equal to one corresponds to a y, so if eta equals one corresponds to a, uh, let's say, uh, I shouldn't use y here. So let me just uh, say y eta one at this location is a function of x, right? Y eta one is basically where is the how thick is the boundary layer from here to here so if you if you look up okay eta equal to one corresponds to about uh, 0.4 times the free stream velocity then y eta one is basically how much further from the wall you have to go in order for the velocity of the process profile to equal to 40 percent of the free stream, free stream then if it is at x uh, is equal to here then the theta is basically the derivative of this with respect to x right make sense so so this is uh this is basically the slope of this not 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 the slope but like 
theta is uh, uh, if you extrapolate this slope to so that this goes back to the wall, then one over theta would be the distance from the x location to where these two lines would meet. Make sense? Any questions on that? Yes? Theta only depends on x because we are assuming a self-similar solution. And if we have a self-similar solution, then if you if you connect these two lines, if you connect these two points, when eta are both equal to two, then you are going back to the same point, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be a self-similar solution. So eta is only uh, sorry, theta is a function of only x, and uh. Yeah, in the in the Blasi solution, we we see we see uh, when we do the non-dimensionalization, theta goes away, right? And I'm going to also interpret what theta means in a moment. Actually, like one over theta, we are going to see that one over theta, which is the distance between uh, x and the extrapolated uh, solution where all the tangents meet, is actually equal to two times the distance from the leading edge of a flat plate. So we are going to get to that conclusion by looking at how this y eta 1 would grow as a function of x exactly from here. Okay. Any any questions so far? So King Shock, I, th I think you still looks like you are thinking about this theta thing. No, I understand the theta. Right. OK. OK, good. Now, now let's see. Um, before we analyze the more general solution, the Faulkner scan solution, which has a non-zero alpha, let's think of the Blasi solution, which is what we solved, that corresponds to alpha equal to 0. So Blasius alpha would be equal to 0, right? Um, so when alpha equal to zero, we can deduce a relationship for phi from this differential self-similar equation, and we did a uh, we did an integration in y to deduce a solution. Uh, basically, integrating this, we can we can remove this derivative with respect to x. And by integrating this in y once, we can derive a relation that is going to get rid of that derivative in x. So once we do that, and we can also use the same relationship here to replace this with alpha times ue square. So now every variable that depends on x is going to be gone and we ended up with a differential equation that only depends on y. Uh, 